are having a conversation with Dr. Chika Ezianya, who is a senior lecturer at the University of Rwanda. Today we're going to talk to her primarily about her research, which focuses on highlighting and showcasing indigenous solutions to Africa's problems and highlighting indigenous knowledge. And so today we're going to talk to her about the Girinka program, which is a very, very interesting social welfare program, which is based in Rwanda. And we're also going to get her thoughts on Africa rising and on women's issues in the African continent. So thank you once again, and welcome to the conversation. Thank you once again for being with us today. Thank you. So I loved your presentation on the Girinka program in Rwanda. It's a program that I actually followed before, and I loved the angles you brought to it. And just for the benefit of people who don't know about the Green Cup program, can you please talk more about why this program stood out to you, and why you wanted to talk about it more in terms of highlighting indigenous solutions to African problems? Great, thank you. Uh, Green Cup is uh, an indigenous knowledge-based approach to malnutrition in Rwanda which was uh, approved by the parliament in 2006. Mm -hmm. In Rwanda, cows mean everything. It's uh, almost as if if you don't have a cow, you, can, you don't count very close to that. And mm -hmm. if you go back to history of uh, what caused the genocide, it was actually the politics of cow ownership that brought about you know, at the basic level of that. So uh, government of Rwanda in 2006 conducted a study that showed that 47% of households in Rwanda were counted as being uh, malnourished and vulnerable. So um, it decided to work on that by using indigenous knowledge of um, giving people cows. Girinka means in Kenya Rwanda, may you own a cow. That's what it means. So because giving a cow to someone in Rwanda, in the traditional Rwandan society, simply means wishing the person well, it's the highest form of goodwill you can ever wish anybody. It's giving a cow. So uh, during weddings, you give cows. If you want a poor person to be lifted out of poverty, you will give the person a cow. There is no, giving the person money doesn't really mean much. But when you give a cow, that's the best thing to do. do. So, government said, why don't we key into this practice? And instead of just keep giving money, looking for different ways of uh, getting people to uh, to eat well, let's give cows. At least they will get milk to, to drink. Uh, but what happened is after giving, after the people received cows, they had more than enough milk. Most families had more than enough milk, and then the. Uh, the families began to sell milk, and from selling milk, they actually began to invest in other businesses uh, as individuals and then as cooperatives. Wow, that's what happened, yes. So what, what do you think are the key, why, why was this, what are the results of the program in terms of what are the key successes of the program and why do you think it's been so successful, because I know it has been, but why do you think it was uh, so successful? As at February 2014, 190,000 and a fraction cows, one would say according to the statistics, uh, the government, the Rwanda Agricultural Board, has distributed up to that uh, number of cows, and then there's been quite a, a drop in mm -hmm. the level of, in the level of malnutrition. Yeah. So uh, from 47,000, 47 percent of households being malnourished, I think the, the last uh, the last survey conducted last year, uh, I think one should say about 22 percent. I'm not sure, but definitely yeah. below 25 percent, which is a huge, huge like half of the percentage of what it was before green had started. Wow. And of course, increased milk production of 11.5%. Uh, and uh, but very importantly for what we're talking about entrepreneurship is that a lot of citizens who consider themselves too poor to be, be entrepreneurs, after getting the cows, which actually did a lot to their mindset. Mm -hmm. And now it is very important for an entrepreneur to believe that he can be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So. Very poor people did not see themselves as people that could have anything to invest. But with getting cows, the, the, that mindset changed. There was a paradigm shift among a lot of poor people from seeing themselves as poor to seeing themselves as rich. And then you want to maintain that social status once you get there. And part of maintaining that status is by investing exactly. So that's what happened. So instead of getting money as before from government in terms of poverty alleviation, we'll take this credit, go start a business, and then after three months, the business <laughs> fails. But you get a cow, your you're already has, rich. You feel like, like now I have to maintain it. Absolutely. Yeah. So that feeling has really transformed uh, a lot of 
four people in Rwanda wow. because people have started businesses and several people that couldn't even afford health insurance are now able to pay health insurance and their children to school. It's really transformed lives across the country. So, anyways. so you know, I love the fact that, you know, in a world where, I mean, a lot of countries, when they're looking at how to cater to the very poor in society, mm -hmm. they immediately go west. They think about mm -hmm. conditional cash transfers. They say, okay, how do we make cash transfers to the poor? And what I love about this program is that they said, okay, let's look at an indigenous solution. And so, how do we promote this indigenous solution? So, Green Card is just one program. You know, how do we say across the board in many African countries, mm -hmm. how do we say, how do, how do we promote these indigenous solutions to these are indigenous problems? Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting, interesting um, question. Uh, indigenous knowledge has to be recognized first for what it is. It is real, mm -hmm. it is authentic, it is original. The fact that it's not being promoted by Western uh, donors uh, does not mean that it is not uh, what should be focused on. Yeah. Across sectors, it's cross-cutting. In, in every field in Africa, indigenous knowledge should form the core philosophy of, um, of promoting whatever it is within that sector that needs to be promoted. Let's take, let's take uh, architecture, for instance. You find indigenous architecture in Africa. In a country like Rwanda, there's a form of touch that is used to build houses, mm -hmm. that was used to build houses, where, whereby when it is very cold outside, it is warm inside, but when it is warm outside, it is cool Oh, inside. wow. Yes. So, but now, of course, that is not modern. So it's now all cement and zinc, and then it's so hot outside and it's so hot inside. <laughs> I feel like, like, why don't we use this touch? Exactly. So but that actually worked. Exactly, that actually worked. But the thing or is, even modify to make it modern. That's the key, modify, because we don't want to be stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not, uh, and that's another thing, another misgiving about indigenous knowledge is that um, it's always it's seen as something backward, it is seen as traditional. It is not traditional. When you say traditional, traditional kind of denotes static. Oh, we've been doing this for the past 150 years. Let's keep riding on, on, Let's move on. Yeah, horseback and donkey back. <laughs> no, it's just about using the whole idea. For instance, what do we do to make that? We, I mean, air conditions are not. You know, environment. They are not friendly when it comes Absolutely. to environment. Well, you know the way the the gas is emitted, mm -hmm. and also even to the to the health of of the person that stays under air condition for twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been several studies establishing asthma and some other uh, diseases connecting that with air You know, um, increased usage of air condition. Yes. Yeah. So I think that is a natural way of keeping the house cool. But how do we make it in such a way that? it can still be seen as modern. So that is that calls for innovation and creativity, but using what is already available. That is very important. In the field of pharmacology, for instance, mm -hmm. you go to India, you find Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic medicine being used widely. You find Absolutely. a lot of tourists I mean, going to India, medical tourists going to mm -hmm. India for the sake of that. The same with China, we know about Chinese herbal uh, medicine. So there's so much that can be done. It's just the awareness. But I have to also add this, that another way that indigenous knowledge has been discredited is that it's also, in some cases, seen as being uh, fetish, mm -hmm. uh, as being backward. And th there has to be a whole lot of work done in improving that image yes. of it. Make it right. more positive. That's right. That's right. Make it more positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is absolutely <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much Thank for you, this Amanda. conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.